So when you look up the release date of any Mario game, you'll notice a lot of them come out in Japan first. This is understandable because Nintendo is a Japanese-based company. But did you know there's actually a Mario game that was only released in the US? And I'm not talking about any of the weird games like Mario is Missing. This is a Nintendo published game that never left the US. Let's take a look. <laughs> What's going on guys? It's Poger coming at you with another video. So we're going to be talking about a US only N64 game that also happens to be a Mario game. So if you've seen a few of my videos and you like what I do, hit that subscribe button right there. Only takes a second, but it helps me out greatly. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so only you can make that happen. And then if you haven't already, feel free to join our Discord server. It's at discord.poger.net or just click on the link in the description. That was a pretty short and sweet intro. Anyway, let's get started. In the late 80s, Nintendo began development on the Game Boy, but they needed a pack-in game. At first, Super Mario Land was considered. This is a decent game that shares a lot of similarities with Super Mario Bros. Why not have this be the included game? However, with the success of Tetris, Nintendo opted to have that be the pack-in title instead. This would end up being a very wise decision. A lot of consumers wanted to play Tetris on the go, so including Tetris with all Game Boy consoles was brilliant. This title really contributed to the success of the Game Boy, and it became the second best-selling title for that console, behind Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. Nintendo loved Tetris, and they wanted to explore the falling blocks concept more. To capitalize on the success of Tetris, Nintendo created Dr. Mario, very similar game to Tetris, but rather than lining up an entire row to clear them, you match four colors in a row. It's also not an endless game. Instead, you have to clear viruses from the map by lining up the appropriate colors. One of the most innovative features is the two-player mode. Here, you have to clear out all the viruses before your opponent does, and there's even garbage in this mode. I'm honestly very impressed with this, especially because the NES version of Tetris didn't have a two-player mode at all. Now, unsurprisingly, Dr. Mario received a Game Boy release too. Despite the color limitations, they did the best they could to make the pieces different from each other, although it still can get confusing sometimes. Both versions of this game are excellent, and they would become great sellers. But Nintendo was not done exploring puzzle games. About a year later, Nintendo commissioned Game Freak to develop Yoshi. Here, rather than controlling the falling pieces, you're actually at the bottom. You can switch two vertical rows with each other in order to line them up the way you want. You're supposed to line up the same blocks in a row, similar to Dr. Mario, and you also have eggshell pieces that you can match up for extra points. This is actually really creative. The idea of switching rows with each other is very unique. A couple years later, we got Yoshi's Cookie. You can tell this is a later release because the colors are very vibrant and Mario is well animated. They changed the Tetris formula a lot in this one. Here, the game is divided into stages and you're given a predetermined playfield that you're supposed to clear. The game operates like a Rubik's Cube where you can move rows horizontally and vertically. It doesn't feel as much like a Tetris clone. To me, it's more like you're solving a jigsaw puzzle, but it's a very fun and addictive game. My all-time favorite puzzle game though is Tetris Attack on the Super Nintendo. Instead of blocks falling from the top, the playfield gradually rises and you have to clear pieces by horizontally switching them around. It's similar to Yoshi, but in that game you could only switch entire rows. Here, you can switch two pieces individually without moving the other rows. When you get a combo, you're still able to move pieces around, which means you can extend your combo further. When battling against a second player or CPU, you can inflict garbage on them. The games can get really long and intense, and it can make for a very fun experience. One feature I really like in this game is the story mode. Here, you have to save your friends by battling the CPU. Each stage in this mode features a new character that you have to battle against. The story mode really increases the replayability of this game. I wish more puzzle games offer you the option to battle against the CPU. 
For each character you beat, you're given a password, and when you complete the game on hard, you're given a code to unlock the very hard difficulty setting. This is my biggest issue with the game. I feel like it really needed a save feature. It's kind of lame that I have to put in a button combination every time I want to play the very hard setting. Sometimes if I haven't played in a while, I'll forget what the combination was, so I have to Google it first. I also have to comment on the lag. Sometimes when there's a lot of stuff going on, the game will slow down. But outside of these minor issues, this is honestly a fantastic game. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, this game never gets re-released. It never made an appearance on Virtual Console, and it's not on Switch Online. I think I know why. Because the game is called Tetris Attack, Nintendo can't release it because they no longer have the license to the Tetris name. This is honestly super lame though, because all they really have to do is change the title to obscure the word Tetris. I don't know, call it Yoshi's Puzzle Challenge or something. Even though this game was never re-released, it would get a remake on the N64, this time called Pokemon Puzzle League. This one is way better. There's more gameplay variations, more characters you can play as, and this time there's actually a save feature. It's also a lot less laggy too. I highly recommend this one over Tetris Attack. With that said, around the end of the N64's lifespan, we would receive a remake of another puzzle game, and this one is really strange. In 2001, Nintendo released Dr. Mario 64. Thankfully, the core gameplay is exactly the same, and they didn't add any new gimmicks. The graphics are obviously way better here. Mario is very well animated in this one. What's up with the room he's in, though? Looks like somewhere you would cut someone's hair, not prescribe medication. But it's not just the graphics that are improved. They added a lot more content to this remake. They have a new marathon mode where the playfield gradually rises, so it basically becomes an endless game. Even though the core gameplay wasn't changed, they did add a few enhancements. You have the option to use a shadow that can help you line up your pieces. They also added more tracks. The music in this game, in general, is fantastic. Even with the enhancements, the game feels just like the original. Nothing about the controls has been changed at all. I'm honestly very impressed they were able to do this. But the biggest upgrade here is the story mode. You can play as either Mario or Wario. Really interesting that they decided to put Wario in here. Anyway, similar to Tetris Attack, you can play against the CPU throughout multiple stages. And each stage features a different character from the Wario Land games. Yeah, that's right. Mario is in the Wario universe. This is one of the only times that's ever happened. Of course, we've seen Wario in the Mario universe many times, but not the other way around. This is extremely wild. They came up with some creative ideas with the story mode. The characters you fight against are not always the same. It depends on what difficulty you select and whether you choose to play as Mario or Wario. At one point in the storyline, you run into three other characters and you actually compete in a four-player match. I really like the way they implemented this. What's nice about the story mode is not only does it add a lot of replayability, but sometimes you have that itch to play against someone, but you may not have a second player. So, the ability to play against the CPU is a much needed addition, and I think all puzzle games should have this. So overall, they added some excellent gameplay modes, but didn't change the core gameplay at all. It feels just like the original NES version, but they made it even better. I'm glad we got this game. But who is we exactly? Surprisingly, the release of this game was super limited. Only the US got this one. That's right. A Mario game that was created by Nintendo was only released in the States. This is weird because the original Dr. Mario was not only released in Japan, but it was released there before anywhere else. So it's not like Japan wasn't familiar with Dr. Mario. So why was this game only released in the US? The reason is unclear, but it might have to do with the fact that the GameCube was on the horizon and maybe Nintendo didn't want to bother with publishing this anywhere else. So even though the US got the upper hand in this situation, Japan would get the last laugh because in 2003, Nintendo released a compilation of their puzzle games on the GameCube. 
This one has some of the games that we talked about in this video, including the N64 version of Dr. Mario. And guess what? It was only released in Japan. Not only that, but thanks to Switch Online, Dr. Mario 64 would be distributed in other regions like Europe, Australia, and South Korea. So this game would ultimately be distributed in other regions, but it doesn't change the fact that the original N64 release was US only. And that's wild. Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, hit that like button. If you enjoy this type of content, hit the subscribe button for more content. Both of these things really help the channel grow. If you have anything to share, feel free to leave a comment. I read every single comment on this channel, and I'm pretty good at replying back. Anyway, have a good one.